This video is sponsored by Squarespace. The Artist Pro 16 TP's pen display is special because it has multi-touch. They have created one feature for this that is brilliant, and I hope this is something that everybody steals in the future. There's a button along the side that makes it really easy to toggle on and off those touch features, but there's three modes, not just two. The first mode is that the touch is on, which works the way you'd expect it to. The second mode is the touch is off, but that third mode is touch is on, but it gives priority to the pen. Oh, this is good. It's been four years since Wacom released their Cintiq Pro 16, which was their first of their next generation drawing tablets. And in 2017, these were light years ahead of everything else out there. There was a 4K display on it. There was multi-touch. You had a laminated display, so there wasn't this big gap between your pen tip and the screen below it. And since then, Wacom hasn't really done that much. There's been some budget displays that have been focusing on tech that they can put in laptops or Android tablets, and all of that is good. But four years, that's given a lot of their competitors time to catch up. Some of you are probably thinking, wait, Brad, is this a review for the XP Pen Artist Pro 16 TP? Wait, is it? Oh yeah, I guess, I guess it is. I bring this up because it has taken four long years for Wacom's competitors to catch up. But here I have it right here on my desk. I have the XP Pen Artist 16 TP. And feature for feature, this thing matches up with that Cintiq Pro. But what it's trying to do is come in at a lower price point. And it does that. But the real question here is how many trade-offs are you gonna have to make along the way? So that is what we're gonna be checking out today. Before I get too far, do wanna shout out on my website if you want to see me rank these types of tablets or all the drawing tech that I review, that's over there on brad.site. Let's pry open this box. First of all, you can tell that XP Pen has taken some extra steps to make this feel special. The box looks good. You take off the top and it has this cool artwork. You peel off the sticker, which I did very carefully because I wanted this box to look good. And the way the box opens up, it, it feels special. It feels premium. You pull out the tablet. It's got this metallic matte finished back. Again, it feels premium. The buttons along the top and the sides, they're clickable. They feel premium. This is something XP Pen has been doing a lot with many of their products over the last couple years is really trying to nail that premium feel. The pen holder, I talked about this in my last XP Pen review. It's very nice the way it slides open, the way it holds extra nibs. Premium. It gives you several cables. There's, there's three here. One is an all-in-one cable, which is a USB-C to HDMI cable. At the end of that, you have the HDMI port and the USB type A cable. Because both go into that enclosure, it's it's kind of wide. It barely fit in my Mac, so that might be something to check out on your laptop or computer. If this is how you're gonna connect it, you wanna make sure you have some space between those two ports. The other way to connect it is to use one of the other cables. There is a USB-C to USB-C cable. So if you're using a newer Mac or a newer PC that has a connector like that, you can go that route. And that third cable is a power cable. You don't actually need it. I plugged mine in because what that allows you to do is it allows you to make the screen brighter by drawing more power from an outlet, which one, I like, and two, for recording, the screen just looks better. In the other box, you have some instructions, a cleaning cloth, and yes, yes, a drawing glove. I'm gonna change things around. I wanna talk about the drawing challenge I'm gonna be doing first, and while I'm showing some of that footage, I get to talk about the specs and my impressions of this device. Ladies and gentlemen, it's still Sword Timber, so we're going back to that well today for our drawing challenge. Also, shout out to everybody who sent me a Sword Timber image that I could use in this video. Links down below if you wanna check out any of those amazing illustrators. And of course, I'm always looking for challenges and things like that, so hit me up in the comments or on Twitter or Instagram if you have any ideas for these videos. Last winter, I found this giant icicle that I tried to swing around as a sword. My wife snapped this picture about 30 seconds before it broke in half. That was a pretty delicate sword, so that's my inspiration today. Now, while I start to sketch this out and rough out my concept here, I do wanna talk about the pen and how it performs a little bit. First things first, this is a one button pen. Many of these pens have two buttons, so if that's something you rely on, be aware of that. The next thing is, is it's not weighted in any way, so it was constantly rolling on me when it was on my desk. Sometimes pens have a, a divot along the side or the button protrudes in such a way that it's not gonna roll that much. That wasn't the case here. There's also an eraser around the back, which is something you don't get in a lot of XP pens. So that was a nice addition. As far as line quality goes, I, I was pretty happy with it. The pressure worked pretty well. It seemed like the pressure at the end of strokes, there was something 
There's something just a little off there though. Pressure at the beginning of a stroke is really good, but at the end you could really see it when you were doing like faster hatch lines. I was getting some really bad shoestringing when I was doing that. If you rely on those kind of fast hatch lines really well, I, I don't know if this is the right tablet for you. XP Pen's other products do this better. Huion's products do this way better. That was the only real big problem I had with the pen. Now in my last review, I did mention how much wave I got to the lines with XP Pen's other product, Good news here is I think this is using their older pen tech, and so that problem has been solved. There's a little bit of wave. I can definitely find it, but it's livable. You could totally get rid of that if you move your hand a little faster or turn on smoothing. So the pen, I give a solid B or B+. I have a lot more to say about this tablet, but before I do that, I want to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Having a website is great. Having your own domain makes that website even better, but what really makes Squarespace the all-in-one platform for your online presence presence are all the marketing tools and analytics baked in. Grow and engage your audience with Squarespace's email campaigns. Create powerful email content that matches your website with your existing products, blog posts, and logo so your message is consistent and effective. Quickly understand your audience with Squarespace's website analytics, including page views, traffic sources, time on site, most read content, audience geography, and more. Give feedback on what's working and how you can improve. Squarespace takes all the guesswork out of search engine optimization for your website, which means you'll get found in search by more people more often. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash bragcolbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, now I'm ready to talk about specs. First off, I already mentioned that this is a 4K display that's 3,840 pixels by 2,160 pixels. This looks fantastic. And I think there's a couple reasons why. Some are good, some are bad. Let, let's start with the first reason I think it looks good. This isn't a super matte screen. A lot of drawing tablets come with a texture to it, which is really good for drawing. This is a glossier screen. It might have some kind of anti-glare coating on it, but it's not like a really hard textured surface. Now the pros of this is it makes those colors pop better and it makes the screen look better. The cons of it are it, it's not as much fun to draw on. It doesn't feel as organic. That's not a killer for me in this, this case. I found it to be good enough, but some folks are, are gonna miss that texture and I, I did miss it a little bit. The other thing is that brightness. This seems to go brighter than a lot of the other pen displays that I've used like this, and, and that is a plus as well. The color gambit is good. It's nothing special, you know, 92% Adobe RGB, 124% sRGB. This is pretty standard stuff. The stylus is a battery-free stylus, 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity. I also mentioned earlier, this is a laminated display. It's not super laminated, so it's not like right up against it like you'd find on a lot of your phones or like an iPad or something like that, but it's good enough and it gets the job done. All right, let's 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 talk about this multi-touch. They have created one feature for this that is brilliant, and I hope this is something that everybody steals in the future. There's a button along the side that makes it really easy to toggle on and off those touch features, but there's three modes, not just two. The first mode is that the touch is on, which works the way you'd expect it to. The second mode is the touch is off, but that third mode is touch is on, but it gives priority to the pen. Oh, this is good. This is a problem with any touch display, except for the iPad, which is when you're drawing, is it gonna pick up your pen or is it gonna pick up your palm? Most of the time it picks up your pen, but if 10% of the time it picks up your palm, it's annoying. So by creating a setting that gives priority to the pen, it makes it a much, much better drawing experience. Now I do wanna put a big asterisk on the touch experience. If you're using this on Windows, they work really well. If you're using this on a Mac, uh, not all of the same features are there. I uninstalled and reinstalled my drivers and fiddled around with settings for quite a while before I stumbled upon this video from XP Pen explaining the touch features for Mac. Basically, you can, you can tap on the interface and you can do some of the basic things, but the thing you really wanna do with a touch-based display when you're drawing is you wanna be able to pinch and zoom. You wanna take two fingers and pan around your canvas. You can't do that on a Mac. So I would pump the brakes a little bit if you're a Mac user. I don't think this is the best experience, but on Windows, on Windows, it works really well. All right, so what did I think? 
This is a premium device, right? Does it live up to that billing? Does it live up to that price? You know, yes and no. The good here is that the screen does look good. The drawing experience is good enough. 4K looks great. The touch mode generally on Windows works really well. I mentioned before on Mac, it doesn't have all the features you'd want it to have. Personally, I missed the more matte display, which gives you that drawing texture. I, I really like that feel. That's me. I also miss the shortcut buttons. There are no shortcut buttons on this display. Some people like them, some people don't. So, so both of those things, which I would label as cons, are really more you know, my preference. If, if you don't mind not having them, this will be fine. The price is listed at $900. Now, I bought mine for significantly less, a little over $700. I think at $700, this is a very good price for what you're getting. Does it feel as premium as what Wacom's doing? In some ways it does, in some ways it doesn't. There's some little design things, the way the cords stick out from the top, it just looks silly. I know that doesn't affect the usability of this all, but I, I think it's odd. The pen isn't weighted in any way, so it tends to roll whenever you set it somewhere, which was just kind of annoying. And then the other thing is, is there's only one button on that pen. For me, all of these things are nitpicks. I think this is a fantastic unit. And I'm really looking forward to what they do in the future now that they have this ability. And of course, that extra multi-touch feature that gives prominence to the pen over your palm. Love that. I think they have something special here. And I look forward to seeing what they do in the future. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching. And I'll talk to you in a couple of days.